Welcome to our interview question series. Today, we're exploring another fascinating question in the field of artificial intelligence. What is the difference between supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised and reinforcement learning? So let's start. Today, we'll consider the four main types of machine learning algorithms. Each type has unique characteristics and applications, so let's break them down in detail. Let's begin with supervised learning. This approach is akin to having a teacher guide a student through a lesson. In supervised learning, the algorithm is trained on a labeled dataset, meaning that each input comes with a corresponding output. For example, consider an email classification system. The algorithm learns to distinguish between spam and legitimate emails based on a dataset of previously labeled examples, where each email is marked as either spam or not spam. Once it's trained on this dataset, the algorithm can then accurately predict the category of new, unseen emails. Supervised learning is divided into two main types of tasks, classification and regression. Classification tasks involve predicting discrete outcomes, like determining whether an email is spam or not, while regression tasks predict continuous values, such as forecasting housing prices based on various features like location, size and number of bedrooms. This method is highly effective for various applications, including image recognition, speech recognition, and medical diagnosis. The strength of supervised learning lies in its ability to provide high accuracy when sufficient labeled data is available. Next, we have unsupervised learning, which is fundamentally different from supervised learning. Think of it as a detective trying to uncover hidden patterns in a mystery without any clues. In this approach, the algorithm works with unlabeled data, aiming to discover inherent structures or relationships within the dataset. For example, consider a marketing scenario where a company wants to segment its customers. The algorithm can analyze purchasing behavior and cluster similar customers together, allowing the company to tailor its marketing strategies to different segments without prior knowledge of what those segments might be. A common technique used in unsupervised learning is clustering, which organizes data points into groups based on similarity. K-means clustering is a popular algorithm in this domain. The algorithm partitions the dataset into a specified number of clusters. Another application is anomaly detection, where the algorithm identifies unusual patterns that deviate from the norm, crucial for identifying fraud in financial transactions or detecting network intrusions in cybersecurity. Unsupervised learning excels in exploratory data analysis, revealing insights that may not be immediately apparent and enabling organizations to make data-driven decisions. Now, let's discuss semi-supervised learning. This approach combines the strengths of both supervised and unsupervised learning. In semi-supervised learning, the algorithm is trained on a small amount of labeled data alongside a much larger set of unlabeled data. This method is especially beneficial in situations where obtaining labeled data is costly, time-consuming, or requires expert knowledge. For example, in healthcare, only a few medical images may be labelled by specialists, but there are countless unlabeled images available. By leveraging the small amount of labelled data, the algorithm can learn to make predictions while using the larger pool of unlabeled data to enhance its understanding and improve accuracy. Techniques such as self-training and co-training are often employed in this approach. In self-training, the algorithm first learns from the labelled data and then makes predictions on the unlabeled data, treating its predictions as pseudo-labels. Co-training involves training two different models on the same data, where each model helps label the data for the other, effectively creating a feedback loop that enhances learning. Semi-supervised learning has found applications in text classification, image classification, and natural language processing, striking a balance between accuracy and the practical challenges of data labeling. Finally, we arrive at reinforcement learning. This type of learning is unique because it involves algorithms learning through interactions with their environment. Instead of being provided with labeled data, the algorithm learns by taking actions and receiving feedback in the form of rewards or penalties. Think of it like training a pet. When it performs a trick correctly, 
it gets a treat. When it misbehaves, it gets no treat or a negative consequence. In reinforcement learning, an agent explores various actions within its environment and learns to choose those that maximize cumulative rewards over time. The goal is to develop a policy that dictates the best action to take in a given state to achieve the highest possible reward. This type of learning is commonly used in applications such as robotics, where machines learn to navigate spaces and complete tasks, and in gaming, where algorithms like AlphaGo have defeated human champions by learning optimal strategies through extensive gameplay. Reinforcement learning also finds applications in areas such as finance, where algorithms can learn to make trading decisions, and healthcare, where it can optimize treatment plans based on patient responses. Techniques like Q-learning and Deep Q-networks, DQN, help agents learn from their experiences and improve their decision-making over time. Summary. In conclusion, understanding these four types of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised and reinforcement learning, enables us to choose the right algorithms for various applications. Each type has its strengths and use cases, and as technology continues to evolve, our ability to create intelligent systems that learn, adapt and solve complex problems will grow, paving the way for even more innovations in the future. Stay curious and keep exploring these fascinating concepts. They're not just interview topics, they're also the building blocks of our technological future. I hope I have answered the question clearly, precisely and understandably. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.